Here we're going to look at a nice classic number theory result. So what we'll do is show that every integer can be written as the sum of five perfect cubes. And this is fairly similar to something that I did in my number theory course the first time around where I explored sums of squares and I showed when a number can be written as a sum of two squares, three squares, ending by showing that every non-negative integer can be written as the sum of four squares. And this is actually quite a bit harder than what we're going to tackle today. So I did it much more in depth the first time I taught number theory. I covered slightly different stuff the second time, but you can find most of the results in the number theory version two playlist as well. Okay, so let's jump into our solution to this statement. So the idea for how to get started will be to look at some perfect cubes that are near each other and see what we could do to add them together to get things to cancel. So I want to look at n cubed versus n minus 1 cubed versus n plus 1 cubed. Well, let's notice if we do n cubed, well, I'm just going to rewrite that as n cubed, just the same, but I want to have an equality here because I will expand these other guys. So using a binomial expansion for n plus 1 cubed, we'll get this as n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. Similarly, if we do a binomial expansion for n minus 1 cubed, we'll get that this is n cubed, and then we'll have minus 3n squared plus 3n minus 1. So I'll let you guys carefully multiply those out if you don't see that immediately. Now the idea is, can we combine these types of objects in order to get something that just has a first power of n? So no n squareds, no n cubes, and no constants. And there is in fact a way to do it. Notice that we could add the last one and the first one, and that'll cancel the constant as well as the square term. So let's do that. So we'll do n minus 1 cubed plus n plus 1 cubed. So like I said, that's going to end up canceling this, 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 and this when we add those together. But notice that we'll build up two of these n cubes. But we can take care of those by adding a minus n cubed. So let's do that. So we'll do plus minus n cubed plus minus n cubed. So that'll cancel all of the n cubed terms, but in the end it will leave us with 6 times n. Well, so what have we done here? We've written 6 times n as a sum of 4 perfect cubes. And we could very trivially expand this to a sum of five perfect cubes just by doing plus zero cubed if we needed to. So this may not seem pretty helpful because we've only shown that one class of integers, those that are multiples of six, can be written in this sum of five perfect cubes way. But this is actually more helpful than we might think. And that's going to be built off of the following fact, is that every integer is of the form 6 times n, 6 times n plus 1, 6 times n minus 1, 6 times n plus 2, 6 times n minus 2, or 6 times n plus 3. Notice that I don't need a 6 times n minus 3 because I could just absorb that into the 6n and turn it into 6n plus 3. So far, we've shown that if the integer takes this form, we're okay. And we just need to work on the remaining five forms. Okay, so let's maybe summarize what we have at the top, and then we'll get working on these other forms. On the last board, we expanded 6 times n as the sum of 5 perfect cubes if we include 0 cubed. And so that means that everything of the form 6 times n can most definitely be written as the sum of 5 cubes. Now we need to look at the other forms of integers. 
And that would be like 6n plus minus 1, 6n plus minus 2, and 6n plus 3. So let's start with this first case, which is maybe the next easiest case, which is 6n plus minus 1, because that's not too tricky given the fact that 1 is already a cube. So we can essentially just write that down. So I'll take 6n plus minus 1. I'll do those two cases at once. And let's notice this will be n plus 1 cubed plus n minus 1 cubed plus negative n cubed plus negative n cubed plus plus minus 1 cubed. Kind of depending on if we have a plus minus here. Okay, so that means we're good in this case as well. Now let's move on to this next case when we have 6n plus minus 2. And we'll just do the 6n plus 2 case. I'll leave as homework for you guys to do a very similar thing for the 6n minus 2 case or generalize the 6n plus 2 case to both cases at once. So 6n plus 2. So let's notice we can rewrite this as 6 times n minus 1 plus 8. Well, that's because we've got a minus 6 here and a plus 8, that'll be plus 2. And this is advantageous because 8 is a perfect cube, it's 2 cubed. So just to reiterate, this is 6 times n minus 1 plus 2 cubed. And now we can expand this 6 times n minus 1 using our 6n expansion where now the role of n is being played by n minus 1. So that'll give us something like this. We have n cubed, that would be like the n plus 1 term, and then plus n minus 2 cubed, and then plus 1 minus n cubed plus 1 minus n cubed plus 2 cubed. So there we have it, and we're guaranteed for this to work because it's just a substitution of what we had up here. But that being said, you could multiply it out and check and you'll see that everything is good to go. So I'll put a check mark here, and like I said, maybe check the 6n minus 2 case on your own if you want to, but it'll work very similarly. Now let's move on to this 6n plus 3 case, and we'll play a similar game to what we did for this 6n plus 2 case. It's a little bit trickier because we need to go all the way up to 3 cubed or 27. So somehow we want to get 27 out of this. But that's not too bad. We've got 6 times n minus 4 plus 27. Notice 6 times negative 4 will be negative 24 plus 27 is 3. So we're good to go there. And then, like I said, this will be 6 times n minus 4 plus 3 cubed. And then we can expand the 6 times n minus 4 using the 6n expansion, just where the role of n is now being played by n minus 4. So that'll give us something like this. We'll have n minus 3 cubed plus n minus 5 cubed plus 4 minus n cubed plus 4 minus n cubed plus 3 cubed. We've written 6n plus 3 as the sum of 5 perfect cubes. And apart from the one that I left as like a little homework exercise, that means we've written every integer as the sum of 5 perfect cubes. And that's a good place to stop.